Casey you saw it a little bit uh, with Hertz, and now you'll see it with Fields in terms of having a, a, a mobile, a fast quarterback. W what does playing one do to help you prepare for what you'll have on Sunday? Well, the thing is, last week we definitely had to prepare for a mobile quarterback. Now this week you see the same kind of athlete, in, 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 but in a lot of ways somewhat faster. So the thing is, it was a good prep, but we got to do things a lot better than we did last week. What's working so well for the pass rush night right now that's that's allowing you guys to, to get to the quarterback? I know a few weeks ago that was kind of an area, especially with the guys that so many guys that are hurt on the back end. That was that was something that, that Coach Arian did said really kind of needed to to improve. And it, it seems like you guys have done that. Well, the sack game is such a funny game. And then we always say from a pass rush, they come in bunches. Sometimes you can go weeks and not get one. Then all of a sudden you have a five and six sack game. You look like you got 12, 14 sack. But they come in bunches. The thing we noticed throughout the time where we wasn't getting them on the ground was we had the pressures. We had the hits. We just didn't have that sack number. So those guys, we got guys that can rush the passer and they just kept, keep working at it. Does it feel like teams are just not even trying to run the football right now? You, you know, I looked at it, and we look at it. Some things kind of, I think, get taken out of context because if you look, when our offense gets up on people, then they vacate the running game. But as they go back throughout the course of the game, people were going in and with definitely the plan to run the ball at us. And we talked to people that we know on teams that played us that did y'all vacate the run? No, that was not the plan. It's just the way the game is dictated. You know, we go in every week that people are going to come in to run the ball because, and especially this week and last week, especially when you have young quarterbacks in this league, we have to prepare that people are going to run the ball at us. And it's just the way that some of the games are playing out. Coach, you've got three D linemen on the practice squad. We don't hear a lot about uh, in Benning, and Kobe, and, and now in Will. Who, who has shown you something of those? Obviously, you've got a lot of established veteran presence on the 53. Right. Well, it's funny. We had Zoe all of two weeks, so we, he don't even know my name. Really. <laughs> no, but he's coming along. And then, you know, I had Kobe and Benning the last two years. And those guys are really kind of just steady Eddie there. We have a good situation that our older guys and we got a lot of vet presence. But those guys show up every day and it'd be inter interesting to see them play if they had to. Let's hope they don't have to, but yeah. <laughs> Vita Vea, now that he's healthy, is certainly making his presence known um, by the opposition. What what have you seen out of him? I know it's hard to really kind of track the growth, and it's not going to be a linear thing when a guy misses almost all of last year right. with an injury and doesn't come back until the late in the postseason. But, but what kind of growth have you seen, and what do you think it's allowing him to – you know, to really make his presence known by the opposition. Well, we thought going when right before the injury to Vita, we thought he was really, really coming on. Then you have the injury, then he comes back late to make through the postseason. And then this year coming out of camp and whatever, we really thought he was a little sluggish one, really totally trusting his leg after the injury and two, just missing the play time and the reps. But right now, the last couple of weeks, he's kind of really, really coming into his own. You know, he's more comfortable. And since the first day we walked through the Door. I've always said he, I think he gets better every day. I really do. I think he's really a consummate professional when it comes to a, a, a working at his craft. And, you know, with this kid, if he just keeps working, the sky's the limit for him. I guess he's gotten used to double teams. It doesn't seem to bother him sometimes. He takes them both and pushes them down. I like to tell them in the meeting room, it comes with your job description. If they ask you what you do for a living, I take on double teams. That's what they pay you to do. So. <laughs> Years, so it's not like you take them some pointers on that. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You guys, I mean, they must appreciate what opportunities he creates. You know, he's sort of a facilitator for a lot of things that happen in there, right? No doubt. You know that if he's commanding double teams, there are some one on ones going on out there and we got guys that we would have liked to think should win they share a one on one. So that it helps everybody. And if he covers up the center now, our linebackers who are extremely fast can run. It just helps us all the way around. I mentioned earlier the the fact that you guys are so ravaged by injuries on the back end. Um, what's it meant to you as a coach, the fact that your guys have really kind of seem to rise to the occasion with that. And it really helped those guys, it seems like, on the back end by being as active and disruptive as they've been. Well, kind of like BA always say, we never make excuses. So we don't give them any excuses. So, you know, it's just everybody has to do their part right now until we get totally healthy back there. We have to do more when we kick up. They'll pick up and it'll be easier for everybody. So it's not a, it's kind of what we do.